Good morning. Thank you. I am Gabriel Ernesto Abad Fernandez, I'm the head of college, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to UWC Diligent. Especially, I would like to welcome our parents, many of whom are here for the first time. We're delighted to be welcoming 82 families to our graduation weekend for the class of 2023. It's a new record, and we're delighted that so many of you can come here, especially after the campus lockdown in COVID and having to have virtual graduations and so on. It's brilliant to be able to meet people face to face. This forum is an initiative we started this year for the whole community to be able to address issues that are of importance to all of us. And today we're going to talk about UWC and the UWC education. And we have the pleasure and the honor of being hosting Faith Ibidon, UWC Movement International Executive Director, and also we welcome his wife, Imi. I would also like to introduce Anka, our first year student from Armenia. <laughs> she will be moderating the conversation with Faith. Thank you very much once again for coming to experience our beautiful community, and I hope you will enjoy this event. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Bari Galus Bolorin. Today, I would like to thank all of you for coming here to our community forum. Uh, it's been a long year for all of us. We have a lot to look back at and to reflect. Uh, so I'm going to start with a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Anka, I am from Armenia, and I grew up in Kazakhstan and Belarus. Um, it is a great privilege to be at the school. It was always my middle school dream to come to here, to high school. And it's such a great experience. It's so diverse, so multicultural. Every day you can wake up and learn something new about new cultures and a lot of new things. There's so many opportunities. Uh, so, a little bit about how our forum is going to happen. Uh, I will pass the floor on to Faith. You can tell us a little bit about yourself, how you met UWC, the movement, anything else that you want to talk about, and then the floor will be open to any questions from parents, students, staff, and yeah. So Faith, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> okay. I guess it's a double tick system, right? All right, we're gonna do the second version, the better version, right? So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ah, much better, much better. Well, thank you, Anka. And uh, it's a great privilege to be here in Armenia for the first time. Uh, it's also bring your spouse to work day. So it's the first time my wife is accompanying me uh, on any of these visits. This is UWC number 10 for me. So perfect 10. Uh, I have finally made it to Diligent. Um, my well, first of all, congratulations to everyone who's graduating tomorrow and to the families who have traveled from very far to be here. Uh, if you had the 3 a.m. flight arrivals, I'm one of you. And so uh, I, we arrived this morning and took a two-hour drive to get here and I think got two and a half hours of sleep. And so we are ready to go. Um, yeah, perfect, right? Um, I grew up in Nigeria and... A lot of my views about education, a lot of the work that I do right now is influenced by the path that I had growing up. Uh, I often begin my story from my parents who give a lot of perspective to the kind of life that I live and the way in which I approach uh, my work. My father is the first of anyone in his family to have any kind of education and uh, he's the second of, I think, 14 children, and the only one to finish a high school education, etc. cetera. And um, after he finished high school in his village up in the southwest region of Nigeria, uh, he had no pathway to university because there were simply no universities anywhere around him. And so he spent a lot of the next three years of his life doing menial jobs. He would be an auto electrician, auto mechanic, a tailor, a carpenter, a few other things that he could do until he got a little bit frustrated with that life and someone from his family helped him escape to another city where he had a chance to get a job at a university as, an, as a handyman. Essentially, he worked in the maintenance section of the university. And from there, he had a chance to get a work-study opportunity that allowed him to work and study at the same time and get his undergraduate education and then his master's degree. 
and it was at that time when he worked in the university um, in this capacity that um, there was the opportunity for um, children of staff to go to the university, to the high school, or the primary school first, the high school and the university within the city. So I had a chance to have a very good secondary education, primary and secondary education, which would have been impossible uh, if my father did not work in the university um, as coming all the way through the ranks. So I had a great scholarship education. And the school that I went to was an international school very much like this. The hallways looked very much like this. My peers were from all over the world. My seat partner was a girl from uh, Israel. The one who sat right next to me was a girl from India. And they were, it was a very international setup. But all the time going through that, I never felt like I belonged in that system because I did not look like these people and where they had come from. Uh, but that began to shape my views about what education makes possible and how our paths can be shaped very early by the things we have access to. I never knew about UWC at the time. It was just not an option for me. I heard about UWC first through some alumni who were just utterly passionate about what they had experienced and kept on talking about UWC everywhere they went. Uh, it took a long time until last year before I realized, well after I'd been in this job, that my high school education was shaped by the very same founder of, of UWC, Court Han. I did not know that my school was a Court Han school because it was not on the walls. Uh, and so last year I was speaking with one of our supporters who asked me, so what school did you go to? Which UWC did you go to? And I said, uh, sorry to disappoint you, I didn't go to a UWC. I went to another very international school, very good one for that matter. And I told him the name of the school, International School Ibadu. And we had a good conversation. And later that evening, he wrote me back and said, well, you didn't tell me it was a courthand school. I said, well, I didn't know it was a courthand school, so let me Google it, <laughs> which is what I did. And I called him back and I thought, well, thanks for helping me discover my UWC roots, because I had no idea I had UWC roots whatsoever. Um, so I went to a very good international school. Now, my path into UWC really has been shaped by my view of what education makes possible. I really believe that education is a way of introducing people first to themselves, and secondly to society, and thirdly a chance to, within that framework, discover the gaps in society that can be met through their unique personalities and what they can help to make possible. And what I have seen really in UWC in the last year and a half has been great passion from lots of young people to want to make a difference whatever that might look like, whatever spaces they might have to do that, I have seen an undeniable appetite for making a difference. Secondly, I have seen a very keen attitude towards learning about the world and wanting to know what is going on out there, wanting to know how we might improve things in various spaces. Um, uncomfortably for many of our administrators, that appetite for improving things gets turned first of all on the schools. So there's a lot of energy and a lot of demand about changing the system within schools and it makes life a little bit challenging uh, for a school head, but it's also what you teach. If you teach people how to change things, they start by changing you and then you get very upset with them every now and then, but eventually that's, that's what prepares them to go make a difference in, in society. Across all the UWCs that I have now been to, I have seen uh, a consistency in student attitudes, uh, a desire for more, a desire for fixing things, a desire for just making their voices heard. And it's always interesting to see the mix of backgrounds come together in one space in which people are so keen to drive things forward. I've also had the unique privilege of meeting UWC alumni across generations. I've met UWC alumni from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s up until now. There is one phrase that without any prompting, every UWC alum says, and it's very, very simple. They will say something like this, UWC changed my life. Every single one of them, without fail, they would find a way to say exactly that. For some, it's those two years changed my life. For others, it's 12 years changed their lives. And I meet UWC alumni across sectors, industries, nationalities. It doesn't matter where they've come from. They all say the same kind of thing. And that, for me, is the most powerful uh, phrase that comes from people who are well into their 50s and 60s. And they keep reflecting on those two years for them, the vast majority of them, and how much it changed their worldviews. And I almost want to bottle that and sell it 
for people to feel that passion, that capacity to reflect. Because I always ask these people, surely you've had many more experiences in your lives. You've gone to universities, you've had first jobs, second jobs, third jobs. You've done all kinds of things in your life. But you go all the way back to when you were 16 or 17. And you freeze those two years and you describe in such detail how that time changed your life. And so if you're a, a, a graduate coming out of UWC right now and you've got this questions, you know, you're just not sure exactly what this has been all about, if UWC actually makes a difference, I have seen your future. <laughs> and in your future, you're going to be saying these exact same words, those two years at UWC changed my life. It doesn't matter where you've come from, and it doesn't matter how you've experienced your time here. When you look back on this experience, you're going to realize just how transformational this was. And then you're going to become part of a really global community of UWC alumni, supporters, friends, parents, everyone who reflects on how this place influenced them. And I want you to realize that you would hardly ever find an experience anything close to what this place has done for you, especially because you are part of something so much bigger than just one school. This is a truly global network of people, of organizations, of schools that believe that we can make the world a better place. And it begins with education. Education is the way that society transforms itself. And that is what we get here. So you are part of a huge transformational project. And uh, I think we have to honor the vision, the leadership of the founders of the college and everyone else who's played such a supportive role in making this possible in this part of the world and your journeys as well for being a part of, of our UWC story. Uh, so from me to you, it's a huge word of thanks and congratulations for everything you've been a part of. And for parents who have come all the way here, well, thank you for trusting your children to UWC. Thank you for believing in what this makes possible. And I hope that you continue to remain part of this global family. Um, and I look forward to listening and hearing and responding to some of your questions. Uh, but thanks really for welcoming me and for hosting this forum. Thank you. Uh, as a first year student, it was very, very interesting to see that perspective. Uh, I feel like I have a lot more to look forward to for my second year and for all the other years to come. Uh, the floor is now open to uh, questions from the audience. So please raise your hand if you have any questions to ask. Should I say that was a very beautiful one and most inspiring. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Adeyemi, Fena Adeyemi. I'm a medical doctor. Uh, sitting next to me is my wife and the parents of Shola Deyemi. Now, my question is this. Um, your roots, some link to UWC, but not primarily UWC. And then uh, you've gone all the way. Now you are the ED of uh, UWC. The thing you have not told us is that how did that come about? That is one. Then number two, I... Uh, we have been part of UWC for quite some time because our daughter, who we've been trying to chat to come now because she's also around, she went to UWC USA. And uh, one thing I've observed is that when it comes to leaving UWC and going to the university, it's been quite um, very interesting. Very interesting in the sense that, uh, well, they get the uh, uh, Davis scholarship and what have you, but then there are certain schools that they would have loved to go to where Davis scholarship probably wouldn't really do the magic. And when they tend to request for additional support, they don't really seem to get that. And I keep asking why should that be so? And then lastly, when I got into this place um, some two days ago, my heart skipped completely. And because what I saw here is quite uh, awesome, I had seen a lot of this on, on the internet, but I never knew it was this uh, beautiful. And I kept on asking questions, was this place designed by an Italian architect or by someone else? And I was told it's a British architect. And I said, I'm sure that British architect must have an Italian origin, just <laughs> like you have something. So I think I'll, I'll pause for now.
maybe we'll get some input from what uh, my concerns are and then maybe if more pops up I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and again, congratulations to you and your family, uh, and thanks for being here. My career began in the media when I began to work for the first time. I spent some time as a journalist, and what I learned from that experience was the capacity to ask very deep questions of society and a desire to find pathways to those answers. I left the media because I realized that I was not going to find the answers through the media. I had to help to create those answers by myself, and I wanted to do that. And so I switched into nonprofit management, and I began to run my own first nonprofit. But after a while, I kept getting drawn back into education. Uh, I worked off and on for five different schools uh, in Nigeria and in the US, and I got very captivated by um, a powerful vision for transforming societies. At the time, it was about transforming Africa in itself, which was my bigger focus. Uh, I went to Johannesburg and spent nine years at a place called African Leadership Academy. And ALA was heavily inspired by UWC. And that was where my UWC roots were really formed. The founders of the academy had gone to spend four years studying Atlantic College, uh, UWC Atlantic in Wales. And they got very inspired by the vision of what UWC was making possible uh, that recreated something of a similar ethos for the African continent. So very similar to UWC, it's a two-year program for many of our schools, two-year program, 16 to 18, from all 45, well, 45 countries of Africa at the time, trying to grow to all 54, uh, scholarship model for those who could afford it. We use the terms first years and second years as well. So very much a UWC type of institution for Africa. When I got to work there, many of my colleagues were UWC alumni. So there was a sense that they didn't just learn from UWC, they brought so much UWC excellence into that space. Um, the very first funder of the college, as I came to discover, the second funder was the wife of a UWC alumna, and then her husband began to donate as well to UW to ALA. So, so much of a UWC spirit uh, in, informed what happened at African Leadership Academy. And at the time that I spent there, I worked um, in almost every section. I was in a classroom, I was doing curriculum development, I led a you know, the selection of students, uh, I did, uh, you know, communications, marketing, some fundraising, program development, basically everything. I ended up on executive at the academy. Um, and because of how much we had admired and studied what happened at UWC, I began to think about UWC as the gold standard. It's the way you do education. If you want to do it very, very well, you go do it at UWC. So when I left African Leadership Academy, if I was ever going to work in education anywhere else, it was going to be at UWC. I did not think I wanted to go work anywhere else outside of what a UWC made possible. Um, and so my path into this role has been work in education, work in social enterprise, work in the media, and bringing all of those three together, realizing that this is a way to combine all of my passions for helping to make society better. Uh, and there's an undertone to everything I've done, which has been leadership development. I'm very, very keen on the ways in which people go through individual transformation as a means of helping to build societal transformation. Uh, and so I have built a number of projects that are all designed to help people undergo personal transformation and then discover how they can help to improve society one way or another. Uh, and so UWC for me is right now the pinnacle of everything I would have wanted to do um, in education. I'll come to your second question around university access. Uh, and firstly, I want to give huge gratitude to Shelby and Gail Davis, as well as Phil Gaia, who worked together on the Davis UWC Scholarship Program. Uh, collectively, they have sponsored more than 13,544 people to go to university in the US. Think about how many billions that is. Unthinkable. It's the largest international scholarship program that we know of in the world. And they reserve that exclusively for UWC graduates. No one else can take part in that. We cannot create that by ourselves. We can't fundraise for that by ourselves. We owe an incredible debt of gratitude to their vision, to their leadership, to their foresight, and their commitment to transforming American higher education through UWC. They're American philanthropists. And their vision is to change America, the US, with UWC excellence. 
they don't have a vision for Spain or for Switzerland or for anywhere in Asia or for anywhere in Africa. They're American. They came in contact with UWC through UWC USA. They began first to fund U.S. students to go to UWC USA, then U.S. students to go to other UWCs across the world, then anyone else to go to any UWC, then UWC graduates to go to U.S. universities. You can see the path of their funding. So they have been very true to themselves, to their nationality, and to their vision for American higher education. The challenge is for others from our other parts of the world to equally believe in UWC so much that they want UWC excellence to go transform other spaces. So I think we should continue to feel that sense of gratitude to them for the pathways they've made possible. Let's roll back 23 years ago before they began to fund the scholarships. The number of UWC graduates who finished from schools like this and had limited pathways to higher education because one, there were not, not enough opportunities to go to school, and secondly, not enough funding. That's what Shelby Davis has spoken about, that he could see that gap of UWC graduates coming through experiences like this and having no clue where to go next. And he thought, I have a passion for American education. I want to change this space. I want those guys to come help change this space. And we haven't found anyone else with that kind of vision. We continue to do the work every single day. I don't expect the Davis family there is philanthropies to change their funding model. I salute what they've made possible, and I'm looking for others who have similar visions. Now, I know that the founders of this college have a similar vision for Armenia, and there are scholarship opportunities available for UWC graduates to go to Amer Armenian University, um, uh, the Armenian International Univ American University. So there is an opportunity here. It's not global yet, right? But someone is going to show up. Um, from We have a number of scholarships as well in the UK. We get scholarships to LSE, to Oxford, um, to University, of, University College London. There are pockets of those scholarships as well. But no one yet has funded 13,000 scholarships. <laughs> and hopefully they will find me and I can have a good chat with them. Uh, but I think it's a reflection of what philanthropy makes possible. And philanthropists have vision first and foremost. So the next person who develops a global vision for what UWC can make possible. Uh, if you know them, please introduce them to me. Uh, but for now, I, I am just grateful to the Davises for what they have done for UWC and for American universities. And last week, I had a chance to go to uh, two of those universities, uh, both in Minnesota. I went to St. Olaf College, and I went to McAllister College. At McAllister, uh, I went for the commencement, the graduation. 23 members of their graduating class were UWC alumni. And the incoming class 49 are UWC alumni. So 10% of the student body is going to be UWC in an American university. That's unthinkable. 10%. I want to send Olaf College. Nearly 100 UWC alumni are there. You know, so these, and you're talking about 99 US universities that have had um, UWC graduates. It's completely unthinkable and all down to the Davises. Um, so we owe them a lot. I don't want to hog the microphone. I know there are more questions, so I'll come around and, and take a few more questions, but I hope that was useful. Hi, Faith. Um, my name is Alok. Uh, I am a UWC graduate and a former Davis scholar, and UWC changed my life. I'd really like to echo your sentiment for the gratitude to Shelby and Gail Davis. Um, and I am also now on the Mauritius National Committee. A lot of us here will agree with the gratitudes towards UWC and towards the Davis uh, Scholarship Program as well. But these answer the question of what UWC can do for me. I would like to ask, what can we do for UWC at this moment? What does UWC International need from us? Great question. Do you mind if I take three or four questions together so we can get more voices in the room? So I've noted the question. Can I get a few other hands? Let's get a few more questions if we can so we give more people a chance to ask. Good morning. I'm Stepan and I'm from Ukraine and in uh, one day I will join the community of alumni of UWC movement. 
and you said that you've seen our future, and I have a very similar question with the previous one. Thousands of students from all over the world every year join the UWC because we believe in the movement and the values we represent, and certainly this movement and these values will stay in our heart much longer than uh, this two years here in Dilijan or in any other of our uh, sister co uh, colleges. And I'm wondering, after this graduation in 10, 20, 30, 40 years, what can we do to support the values and the movement that we came here to celebrate? Thank you very much. Good morning, Faith. I'm Jochen. My son, Niklas, is about to graduate tomorrow. And my wife, Alexandra, my daughter, Alina, Christina, are here. Thank you very much. And speaking after you from Ukraine, we host Ukrainian families in our home in Berlin. And every morning we have a report of the bombs that hit Ukrainian territory. We spent 20 years in Russia. Here's the vision for change I have, and I was wondering whether United World College does something in that direction. My mentor, Hermann Scheer, believes that if we wake up tomorrow in a world, whenever mind where you are born, you have access to cheap, decentralized power, renewable power, well, that's not just good because we spend less money on oil, gas, and coal, but it's good because it creates decentralized power, democracy, and in history, there's never been war between two true democracies. So I was wondering, what does UWC do in the direction of promoting this decentralized renewable power drive? What's your vision of change, your theory of change to arrive in a world of peace? Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Morning. I'm Uncle from Nepal, um, and it's, it's great to have you here. I think I remember reading an article um, when you were getting elected as um, the, the executive director of UW, UWC International, and um, I read the article, and it said, you know, years of experience, this, that, and I was like, oh, he seems good. Um, so after being a part of the UWC experience, the UWC International community, and your experience in education, what is one thing that you have personally learned that we can take away from you? Thank you so much. What can you do for UWC, and, and how can you support the future of UWC? First and foremost, never stop talking about UWC. People like me came into UWC because people like you didn't stop talking about UWC. We can't afford for this to become an insular group of people who believe the same things, hung out with each other, and never talk to others about it. That is going to be pointless. Uh, the essence of our kind of education is that we influence society with that. And we can do that by bringing others into our vision. So first and foremost, very simple, as much as you can, talk about UWC. You think about how Shelby Davis came to UWC. Someone randomly found him at an event or at a ski slope and talked about UWC. What if that person just never bothered to talk about UWC? We wouldn't have all these great things that we have today. So first and foremost, keep talking about UWC. Secondly, how can you help to decentralize or domesticate UWC in your context? You are doing that already through the National Committee, and that's fabulous. For everyone who's come here through a National Committee, Think about how you can volunteer with your national committee as you go on. Many of our national committees are supported by alumni, run by alumni. A lot of them are supported by parents as well. So for parents who are here, if you have appreciated what UWC has made possible for your child, you can help other people experience the same thing. It will take a few hours from you every now and then. When it's selection time, you can help to interview. You can help to do some fundraising locally in your country. You can help to provide psychosocial support for children as they go through their UWC education. You can help to provide internships for them as they graduate, help them find their first jobs. There are lots of things you can do locally in your countries for UWC. We will never have enough volunteers for UWC. So that's the second thing you can do. Everyone in this room can do that. And I've met people who are in different parts of the world supporting the national committees back at home. Right? So it doesn't matter where you go for university. You can be a part of the national committee from anywhere in the world. COVID has helped us move things forward uh, a lot. So please think about how to support your national committee. Thirdly, there's something called the UWC Pledge, which I hope you've all heard about. Is there anyone who has not heard about the UWC Pledge? Can I see your hands? I see a few hands. The rest of you are not telling the truth. Uh, who's not heard about the UWC Pledge? Great, a lot more hands are coming up. The UWC Pledge says this. If you've come into UWC, 
over the rest of your lifetime, you commit to doing three things. You provide your time, your talent, and your treasure. It's very, very simple. It's a commitment to saying, I have been given something, I will give others something as well. And it means that you find a way to commit some of your time towards supporting UWC, some of your talent towards supporting UWC, and some of your treasure towards supporting UWC. So that invitation means you can support your national committee, you can do some fundraising for UWC, make a micro donation of your own towards UWC, help us with selections, help us spread the word. There are lots of ways to get involved with UWC, so that's all possible. Further to that, if you're uber passionate about UWC, there are pathways into the governance system of UWC. Through your national committee, you might join the committee of national committees and have a chance to sit on the international board of UWC further down the line. You can support regional hubs of UWC. Wherever you go, you can help to build city hubs. I spent time in the US last week uh, in DC, in Washington DC. We had a gathering, spontaneous gathering of 70 UWC alumni in, in Washington DC on a Sunday evening. And I saw all of them in various industries, various sectors. And I was thinking, wow, this is fabulous. And it mirrors what we have in New York, what we have in San Francisco, where you have gatherings, clusters of UWC graduates. I want more of that in as many cities as possible across the world as a force for good for the local community and for the UWC movement as a whole. In essence, there is no shortage of what you can do for UWC. There's also something called UWC X. It's an opportunity for you to find a UWC expression wherever you find yourself. So you can create a, a, a program that mirrors some element of the UWC journey for your local community and find a way to get endorsement from UWC for what you seek to do. There's no shortage. There are lots of things you can do to support UWC. And if you've got a lot of money, or a little bit of money, we will take it. So please talk to me about how much money you've got to give to UWC. In essence, there's no shortage of what you can do. Most importantly, spread the word, because someone whom you know is going to be useful for UWC. I'll give you one little thing. For those who are in jobs, highly productive jobs, I have found a lot of room for UWC graduates uh, to help drive corporate funding in their companies, which means you don't have to feel completely stuck by how much you have to give. A lot of companies have corporate matching schemes, which means if you donate to a cause, your company might match your donation, right? which helps us in, in some ways triple the amount of money that goes towards scholarships. Here's an example. We were in San Francisco last year, and we, we went to meet an exec at Netflix. And I was speaking to him about what Netflix can do for UWC. First of all, I want a Netflix documentary. So if you know someone who can make that possible, please talk to me. But the point was, I was asking him how Netflix gives or supports social causes. And he let me know that Netflix matches employee giving up to $20,000 a year. Which means if one Netflix alum or Netflix employee donates $20,000 towards UWC, Netflix will match that to become 40,000. I said, well, that's great. How many UWC alums do we have at Netflix? Quick search, at least 10. So I thought, awesome. If all 10 of them gave $20,000, we had 200,000. Netflix to match that becomes 400,000. That unlocks at least eight scholarships to UWC every single year. Shelby Davis will match that. We're at $800,000 already at 16 scholarships. Why aren't they talking to each other, these Netflix UWC alums? Because they can give 20,000 bucks a year. And if all 10 of them got together, we can unlock at least 16 scholarships for UWC by them coming together, which is why it's important for me for our alumni to be networked, to be connected. Because you have a UWC alumni who work in the same company and don't even know each other. I think, well, that's a disaster. Because the collective force can do so much for that company, for UWC, and for them, right? So as you go on through life, you get into your first job, it's a fabulous place to work, and they pay you good money. Think about how you can find the employee corporate matching scheme in your company, because we could all benefit from that. And for those of you who are employers, have you thought about matching the donations of your employees towards UWC or something else like this? Because we could really have a value chain that makes a lot of things better. And that brings me to that question about what is our vision for world peace and what's our theory of change. I think we operate at three levels in UWC, what we do very, very well. First of all, we identify exceptionally brilliant young people like your children, many of those who are in the room today, 
people who have a heart for the world, people who want to make a difference, people who believe in the power of multiculturalism, international understanding, um, social change, we find them, we walk largely through domestic leadership. Our national community system does a lot of good work in finding people in multiple parts of the world and bringing them together. The first leg of our model is finding great leadership talent, like what we have in the room. The second part of our model is what happens here. When you find that talent, how do you refine it? How do you develop it? How do you prepare it for a lifetime of change? So your two years of studying here helps you become so much more capable of making a difference in society. But what happens next, I think, is the most important. How do you fire that talent out into the spaces where it can actually make a difference? And that's what happens through universities, through your first job, through your second job, through our alumni clusters. So our model is to identify global leadership talent, to develop and refine that talent, and then connect that talent to opportunities and spaces where they can make that difference. Now, this is not hopeful. This is strategic. Because the way things change in society is by connecting people to issues and helping them discover their agency to make a difference on those issues. UWC by itself won't prevent world, world wars, right? But we can develop the people who will go into those positions with different mindsets, with different global networks and different approaches to making a difference in society. If you then look further down the line, can we see where our alumni are now present and how they're driving change? in the public sector, in the humanitarian sector, in the private sector, in the non-profit sector, they're everywhere, doing the kinds of things we hoped they would do over the course of their lifetimes. Some of them will then have specific visions for political change. Some will have specific visions for business change. Some will have specific visions for social change. And they will find other people like them who believe in the same things, or they would influence those people to make a difference. In essence, what we are doing right now is changing society already. And then there are specific people in our network who would be the right people for those industries who would do those things. And it's our job to prepare them ahead of when they're in those positions. And that's what I'm most proud of, being able to see people down the line who came through UWC 20, 30, 40 years ago. And I can see what they're doing today, proving that we were right in selecting them. Um, and so that's my view of what we can do best. Education is that vehicle through which we are best placed to transform society over time. And we can see the results of that. So, so much more to do. Um, I know I have spoken a little bit too long, uh, but I hope that these answers were a little useful, gives you a snippet of, of my thinking and what we make possible. Uh, for the questions I haven't yet been able to take, uh, if you see me over the rest of the day or tomorrow, Please do drag me and ask me as many questions as you can. I'll do my very best to give you some good responses.